Try this example. We redraw the picture. We go to the initial tail. It's coming from a pie bond, so we erase the pie bond. We change the charge on the atom at the initial tail. That's this atom here. It started neutral, it's losing electrons, so it becomes positive. Now we can erase the tail. Please remember to change the charge at the initial tail while you are dealing with that initial tail. A lot of people make um, all their changes to the resonance structures and then they do the charges at the very end. A lot of people oftentimes leave all the charges to the very end. That doesn't make sense because remember, why are we doing this in the first place? To get the charges. We should write each charge down as soon as we know what it's going to be. Well, um, as soon as we've dealt with the initial tail, we know what the charge here is going to be. So we want to make that change as soon as we can. Now we go and look at this head. It indicates the creation of a pi bond. We're in the middle of the string of arrows. No charges change. We erase the head. We look at this tail. It indicates that we're moving a pi bond. So we erase that pi bond. We're in the middle of the arrows, so we don't change any charges, but we erase that tail. Now we look at the final head. It's pointing at the atom, so we're forming a new lone pair. We don't need to draw the lone pair. But since we're at the final head, we need to change a charge. This oxygen started neutral, and it's gaining electrons. So it ends up with a negative charge. Now we can erase that head. We always check the net charges. No charges here. Here we have a plus charge and a negative charge, so again we have a zero formal charge. Try this example. As usual, we've redrawn our picture, including the arrows. We go to the initial tail. This initial tail is coming from the lone pair. So we have to erase that lone pair. And because we're at the initial tail, we have to deal with the charge. This atom started neutral, it's losing electrons, so it becomes positive. And we can erase that tail. Now we come to this head, indicating the formation of a pi bond. No need to change any charges. We're in the middle of the string of arrows. Now we're at this tail coming from this pi bond, so we erase that pi bond. No need to change any charges. We're in the middle of the string of arrows. Now we come to this head. It's pointing to this oxygen, which indicates that we're making a lone pair, but we don't need to draw the lone pair. But we're at the final head, so we need to change the charge. This oxygen um, is starting neutral, and it's gaining electrons. So it ends up with a negative charge. We always check to make sure the charge is balanced. No charges in our original resonance structure. In our final resonance structure, we have a plus one charge and a negative one charge. Zero overall, so the charges balance. Remember again, why don't we have to change the charges on any atoms that are in the middle of the string of arrows? Because every atom that's in the middle of the string of arrows has a head coming towards it and a tail going away from it. This carbon is receiving electrons in, um, in a new pi bond and losing electrons from this pi bond. So we only ever have to change the charges at two atoms, the initial tail and the final head. And we always have to change the charges at those two atoms. Try this problem. Well, uh, we can start at the initial tail. Where are these electrons coming from? This was a trick question. This was a trick question because this arrow is meaningless. This arrow is meaningless. Because the tail is not coming from anything that we recognize as where a tail should come from. Where can a tail come from? Well, a tail can come from a lone pair or a pi bond. This is clearly not coming from a pi bond, and it's also not coming from a lone pair. If it was coming from a lone pair, we would either have to draw the lone pair or show a negative charge that indicates the lone pair. It's meaningless to have the tail of an arrow directly pointing at an atom. It's okay to have the head directly pointing at an atom. This head is directly pointing at this carbon. That is conventionally perfectly fine. 
but you need to know that um, we never have a tail coming directly from an atom. That just doesn't make any sense. Um, so this would, be, this would be a good time to learn that. Now, uh, whatever silly person drew this picture, what was that silly person probably thinking? That silly person was probably thinking that they were moving the lone pair off the nitrogen, uh, but they screwed it up. Um, this does not mean that we're moving the lone pair. Since this nitrogen has no formal charge, if we want to move a lone pair, we must draw in the lone pair. If there's no negative formal charge, if you want to move a lone pair, you must draw in the lone pair. That's just the convention. Okay, so now I've fixed the picture so that it makes more sense. Try again. Try drawing the resonance structure based on this picture. As usual, we start by redrawing our picture. By the way, one thing I should mention is, again, I hope that you are using this redrawing technique on every problem. You should start by redrawing the picture. Now, once these problems are not difficult for you anymore, you won't have to do this. But again, I'm assuming that the people watching these videos are finding these problems to be difficult. As long as these are difficult for you, as long as you're making mistakes, you need to use the redraw and modify technique to squeeze out those mistakes. But when you redraw the picture, you got to be super careful that you're redrawing it accurately. It would be the easiest thing in the world to get sloppy and redraw the picture and leave something out. I think you might remember I did that myself on a previous example. I tried to redraw the picture, but I actually left a bunch of stuff out. Uh, well, then I could easily have blown it on that problem if I hadn't caught myself. So always double check to make sure that when you're redrawing the picture, you're redrawing it correctly. For example here, don't forget about this pi bond. You have to redraw the pi bond. Now the pi bond isn't doing anything. We're not going to change the pi bond. There's no arrows coming to or away from it. Um, but that's all the more reason not to forget about it. So make sure that when you're redrawing the picture, you take your time and double check yourself, especially on a test question, and make sure that you're redrawing the original picture accurately before you start making your modifications. Now we look at the initial tail. It's coming from the lone pair, so we erase the lone pair. It's an initial tail, so we have to change the charge. This nitrogen started neutral and it lost electrons, so it ends up with a positive formal charge. And now we can erase that tail because we've dealt with it. Now we look at this head, which indicates the formation of a pi bond. We better draw that pi bond. And we're in the middle of the string of arrows, so we don't change any charges, we just erase the head. Notice that right now this carbon ha um, has broken the octet rule. It has more than eight electrons, it has five bonds. But we're not worried about that because if we know that in a second we're going to fix that when we deal with this arrow. So obviously when you're using the redraw and modify technique, sometimes there will be a point where an atom seems to temporarily be having more than uh, the standard octet. We don't need to worry about that um, as long as when we're done with all the arrows, nobody has more than an octet. This tail is coming from the pi bond, so we erase the pi bond. But we don't change charges because we're still in the middle of the arrows. We erase the tail. Now we're at the final head. This atom is pointing directly at this carbon. Remember that in the bond line notation, um, when you're at the end of a line, that represents a carbon. So we know that there's really a carbon over here. This head is pointing directly at that carbon. That means we're forming a lone pair on this carbon. Now there's no need to draw the lone pair. We usually don't draw lone pairs, but because we're at the final head, we have to change the charge. This uh, carbon is starting neutral and it's gaining electrons. So it ends up negative. We always have to check to make sure the charges balance. No charges in our original structure. In this structure, we have a plus one and a minus one charge for zero net charge overall. So we got it right. 